Good evening, everyone. Thank you for joining me here tonight on The Last Call. The Last Call has been raised up to tell you about Jesus Christ and point you to the finished work of Jesus Christ, what he did for you on the cross. Well, tonight I'm going to talk to you about Jesus Christ calms the storms. We're going to look at Mark chapter 4. We're going to look at verses 35 through 41. And this story, I believe, is going to encourage you. I'm going to tell you that Jesus Christ, whatever problem you're going through today, Jesus Christ is the answer. Amen. So here in Mark chapter 4 and verses 35 through 41, this is the story of Jesus Christ calming the storm. This story shows us that Jesus Christ will help all of those who call upon him. But not only that, he is able to help those who call upon him. So no matter what you're going through today, no matter what anybody is dealing with today, Jesus Christ will help you. Jesus Christ is able to help you, but you have to call upon him. So what we see in this story is that Jesus Christ and his disciples, they get into a boat. They're about to cross over to the other side of the sea. They're going to go into the country of the, of the Gerasenes. And Jesus Christ, you know, he's tired here. He's, he's just finished a full day of preaching. Uh, you know the earthly ministry of Christ. He was always preaching. He was teaching. He was healing people and doing a bunch of ministry. And so he is tired and he is asleep in this boat as the disciples and him are going across the sea. And so as they're going across the sea, there's this great wind that we are told that picks up. And as a result of this wind, these great waves begin to come. And they're beating against the boat that the disciples and Jesus Christ are in. And it begins filling up the boat. Now, Jesus is, again, asleep. But his disciples, they are panicking. They are full of fear. For they're fearing for their lives. And no doubt they were doing everything that they could to keep that boat afloat. Now, all of these men that were in this boat were not experienced men. But there were many of them who were on that boat who were pro professional fishermen, and they had spent their whole lives on those seas. But yet, the storm is so great that they're panicking, and they think that they're going to die. They think that their boat is going to sink, and that they're going to be, that they're going to drown. And so these men have reached the point where there is nothing else that they could do. And so this storm here is a picture of the storms of life. We all have storms that we face. And we may be like the disciples. We've done all that we can. But the situation looks helpless. And we are sinking. Our boat is getting full. You know, maybe your situation is as you lost a job. Maybe the bills are piling up. Maybe you have a relationship that is breaking up, a uh, marriage that is breaking up. Maybe your children have gone wayward, they've gone astray. Whatever the situation is today, maybe you need healing in your body, whatever it is, I want you to know that Jesus Christ is the answer. But the storm here that these disciples are dealing with represents the storms of life. And we all go through storms of life. We all have something that we're all dealing with. Maybe for some it's, it's uh, alcoholism, some it's drug addiction, whatever it is, we all have problems, we all have issues. But Jesus Christ is the answer and we must look to Him and we must put our faith in Jesus Christ. And so while the disciples are panicking and fearing for their lives, Jesus is in the back of the boat. He's sleeping. He's not bothered by what is going on. Now, how could somebody sleep through this? I mean, that boat has got to be rocking, going up and down. I mean, winds and water filling up that boat. I mean, how could he be sleeping? He's not bothered by what is going on. He said they were going to go to the other side. He knew it was the plan of God for them to go over to the other side and do ministry there. So he knew that is exactly what was going to take place. But in verse 38, it says that they woke him up. His disciples woke him up and they said, Teacher, don't you care that we are going to die? Don't you care that we're going to die? I mean, the storms of life, you know, they can come suddenly and they can come violently just as this storm came upon the disciples. I mean, this caught them by surprise. When they would have began sailing out there, it would have been nice and calm, but all of a sudden those winds picked up and it came on them suddenly and 
violently. And too often, you know, for us, as we're going through the storms of life, because the storms of life, for us, they can come upon us very suddenly. And they can come upon us very violently. And sometimes we're like the disciples. Hey, don't you care that we are going to die? Hey, what are you doing? Don't you care about us? Don't you care about my situation? Don't you care about my finances? Don't you care about my health? Don't you care about my children? Don't you care about, care about my marriage? Whatever it may be. Sometimes we're like that. God, where are you? Type of thing. Well, you know what? Many times we are quick to blame God and we're quick to ask him where he is. Well, the problem may be that we haven't wanted his help. We've tried to do things all on our own. You know, when this storm first started up, they didn't immediately call upon Jesus. No, they waited while they were dealing with it on their own. And it wasn't until they thought that, hey, we're about to die here. We're about to sink. We're going to drown. You know, now it's time to call on Jesus. And many times we're going through life's problems and we're all trying to deal with it on our own. We think we can deal with it in our own strength, in our own power, our own ability. And we're not inviting God into the situation. We're not asking him for his help. You know, oftentimes we do that as Christians. You know, we're supposed to be living by faith. We're supposed to be trusting in God. But we aren't inviting him into our lives. You know, we know of God. We, we know that there's a God there. We know the scriptures that he cares about us. He never leaves us and forsakes us. But we don't, sometimes don't really apply that. When it comes to life situations, we're still trying to deal with it on our own. And then it's not until we're sinking, until we think, hey, I can't handle this anymore. I'm at the end of my rope. Now it's time to call on God. Well, we get ourselves so far and so deep into the situation when God has always been at our side waiting for us to, in, waiting for us to invite him into the situation. But there are also others. And for them, the problem is that they make no room for God in their lives. But when the storms come, they ask God, where is he? Now, many unbelievers even do this. People who don't know God, who, or maybe claim to don't, don't know God or believe in God. And the storms come, troubles come, problems come in their life. But, it's always, but in that moment, they're willing to call out to God. But any other time in their life, they, they don't call out to God. They're comfortable. Everything's okay. I have work. I have money. Everything's going fine for me. I have no time for God. I don't want to acknowledge Him. I don't want to get into His Word. I don't want to obey His Word. I don't want to pray. But the moment a situation comes that they can't handle, that's when they're willing to call out to God. But you know what? God could also say to them, where are you? You know, many times we're willing just to say, God, where are you? But we've left him out of our lives. But God could say the same thing to us. Where are you? You see, in fact, God does say that to somebody in Scripture. It's all the way back in Genesis chapter 3 and verse 9. God had told Adam and Eve, he told them not to eat of the, true, of the tree, the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. He says, don't do that. If you do it, you will surely die. Well, we know the story. They disobeyed God. They rebelled against God. And as a result of it, what happened? They sinned. They fell. And now they were separated from God. They used to walk with God in the garden, talk with Him, fellowship with Him. But then God has to come into the garden and call for them. He's coming into the garden and He's looking for them. Adam, where are you? Because normally Adam would be there and they would have fellowship. But now Adam is hiding himself from God. Why? Because of the guilt and the shame of sin. You see, many of us are hiding ourselves from God. This is what sin does. Sin, it creates guilt, it creates shame, and it also can create a hatred for God. You see, the Bible tells us that there is none who seeks after God, not even one. And many of us are like that. We're not seeking after God. We don't acknowledge Him. We don't care about Him. And it's as a result of our sin. But God is inviting us. He's coming after us. You see, how does he do that today? How is he coming after me? He comes after you through the preaching and the teaching of his word. He sends his, his representatives. He sends his ministers who teach and preach his word to call people back to him. And God is calling you to him today. And he's doing it through this message right now. Where are you? 
I'm looking for you. Look at your sin may be separating you from God. It may be keeping you from God, but God has, has made provision for that. There is a solution to the sin problem. There's a solution to what separates you from God and keeps you out of fellowship with him. And that is what God has done by sending his son, the Lord Jesus Christ, to die on the cross and pay the price of your sin. Yeah, he paid the price of your sin. There's a penalty for sin. And that penalty is death. But Jesus Christ came and he took your place on the cross and he paid the price for your sin. And God is saying, come and receive the sacrifice of my son. Come and receive what my son did for you on the cross. You can be forgiven. We can have fellowship. We can have friendship. I'll adopt you into my family and you will be with me forever. But it's up to us. We have to call upon him. And sometimes we wait until the last moment, until we're in a situation where we think it's over, it's the end. You know how many people I've heard saying, you know what, Ken, you know what, I'll wait till that day just before I die, and then I'll accept God into my life. I'm going to live my life the way I want here and now, but at the end of it, that's when I'll receive Him. See, they wait till they're at the end of their rope. When God is saying, I'm here now, why not have God in your life? and live for the purpose for which he created you. Why just wait just for the time just to get into heaven? There's, there's things he has here for you here and now. But the thing is, you have to cry out to him. You have to call him. The disciples woke him up. Teacher, don't you care that we are going to die? They finally came to the end of their rope and asked Christ for help. See, we all need to know that Jesus Christ is the answer to everything we need. Whether it is sin, He's the answer. Jesus Christ saves. Whether we need deliverance from sin, Jesus Christ is the deliverer. He breaks the power of sin. Whether it is healing that we need, we're sick in our bodies, Jesus Christ is our healer. Whether we have emotional problems, depression, discouragement, frustration, whatever it is, Jesus Christ is the one who is willing to bear all of our cares, all of our worries, so that we don't have to. He's the one that wants to set us free. He came to give us life and life more abundantly. We need to put our trust in him. And so the disciples, they woke him up. Don't you care that we are dying? Well, in verse 39, Jesus gets up, he speaks to the storm, and he says, silence, be still. This is him speaking to the storm. And instantly, the storm calmed. The wind stopped, the waves died down, and the sea became calm again. And so, it doesn't matter how big the storm is. It doesn't matter how terrifying the storm is. Jesus is able to deliver and calm the storms of our life. The disciples wondered if he, if he cared. Jesus demonstrated here that he does care about you. But the one thing they had to do is they had to cry out to him, Jesus. See, friend, you have to call out to him. Are you willing to call out to him today? Are you willing to invite him into your life? If you keep him on the outside, he can't help you. It's not until you invite him into your life, until you invite him into the situation that he can help you. You see, Jesus told us that if we ask anything in his name, that he will do it. But that's a result of our relationship with him. When one has a relationship with Christ, they can call upon him and he will answer. But if you're separated from him, if you're in sin, if you've never, you know, given your life to Christ, you have to come into relationship with him first. And the first thing that you need to ask him is, save me. And if you ask him that, he's going to save you. He's going to come into your life. Anything you ask in my name, I will do it. You ask to be saved, he's going to save you. And from that point on, as you have a relationship with him, he's always with you. And whatever it is that you need, he gives it to you. The Bible tells us that he's given us all things that pertain to life and godliness. In verse 40 says, why? So in verse 40, why were these men fearful in the storm? Jesus tells us in verse 40, 
he said that they lacked faith. Their fear, it revealed their lack of faith. Jesus says, why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Now listen, these men had been following. They'd been listening to his teachings. They'd been listening to his preaching. They'd been witnessing uh, blind eyes opening, deaf ears opening, the lame getting up and walking, 5,000 people being fed from uh, uh, two, what was it, two loaves uh, or two fish, five loaves of bread, whatever it was. And he feeds them all. He multiplies that fee food so that 5,000 people could be saved. See, the question is, are you trusting in Jesus today? Jesus said the problem is their faith. Why are you so afraid? Have you still no faith? Also, are you trusting in him today? When you put your faith, your trust, your confidence, your belief in Jesus, he's going to save you. He will deliver you. He will heal your broken heart. He, he, will, he will calm the storms of your life. But you have to trust him. You have to believe in him. And so in verse 41. You see, it says they were filled with great fear. They said to one another, who then is this that even the wind and the seas obey him? So they're still learning about Jesus. Even though he's doing all these things, they're beginning to witness all the miracles that he's beginning to do. And listening to his teachings, they're still learning about him. And so Jesus, this is why he says, do you still lack faith? So the storm was another lesson for these disciples to learn who Jesus truly was. The disciples knew that no man could do what Jesus had just done. Only God could command the winds and the sea to calm. So they were learning that they need to put their faith and their trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. And that's what we need to do today. We have to put our faith, our trust in Jesus Christ today. But I want you to know he is the answer. But you have to invite him in. You have to call out to him today. I know sometimes we get into problems. We get discouraged. We get frustrated about situations. We get frustrated about our life. And even as Christians, we don't want to pray anymore. We don't want to hear people's advice. We just want to get through it on our own. We want to just be angry. We want to be frustrated and just deal with it on our own. But you know what? You don't have to do that. Today, you have to acknowledge that Christ is everything that you need. Jesus Christ is the answer to everything you need. He'll heal your broken heart. He'll take away the discouragement. He'll take away the depression. He'll heal your body. He'll fix your marriage. He'll, 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 you know, bring, he'll help you with your children, whatever it is, your finances, your job, whatever it is, God's blessing will be upon you. But you have to call on him. But you also have to stop doing the things that are hurting you because sometimes the things that we are doing, we're, the, we're our worst enemies. We're causing the problem. We make bad choices. We make bad decisions. We, we refuse to invite God into the situation. We refuse to obey God in his word. And therefore, we go through these circumstances. So sometimes, sometimes what we have to do is we have to repent. We have to ask for forgiveness. We have to acknowledge what we have done wrong and then invite Christ in. And when we invite Christ in, he's there to help us. He's there to save us. He's there to deliver us. He's there to heal us. He's there to do whatever we need. Jesus Christ calms the storm. So today, if you need help from Christ, from Jesus Christ, I'm going to ask you to put your trust in him. I'm going to ask you to put your faith in him, your complete confidence in Jesus Christ. He has done everything that you need. Whatever the answer is what, that you need, he's the solution. He is the answer to all those problems. But put your trust into him. What I'm going to tell you to do today is just call out to him. Say, Lord, forgive me. I repent of my sins. I ask you to come into my life. I ask you to save me. If you've been separated from him and, and you're living in sin, you need to repent and you need to ask him to come into your life and to save you. Just talk to him. Ask him that. If you're a Christian and you've left him out of your life, you haven't invited him in the situations, you're, you've been trying to do things on your own, you've made bad choices that weren't in line with the scriptures, been disobedient, then repent. Ask him for forgiveness and then invite him into the situation. He'll help you. Do that, my friends. Jesus Christ calms the storm. 
Thank you for tuning into this program here tonight at The Last Call. We'll see you next week.